Today we're gonna to look at the motivation behind a pretty large family of typical math contest problems. So we'll start with one of these problems which I came up with, and then we'll look at kind of what's a little bit deeper here, like the underlying mathematics, and then leave with maybe the extension of that underlying mathematics. Okay, so let's see what we have. The first problem that we'll work with is what happens if a plus b equals 4 and a squared plus b squared equals 12, can we determine the value of a to the fifth minus 100ab plus b to the fifth? And of course we can just based off the way this is phrased, it's asked us to determine that. Okay, so we're going to approach this without any prior knowledge to what we'll do later. So we'll just kind of do it by following our nose and maybe like kind of hacking together a solution. Okay, so let's start by noticing that B is equal to four minus A. So that's pretty clear from this first equation. But now we can square both sides and we'll see that B squared is equal to A squared and then minus eight times a plus 16. So I think that's pretty clear just by multiplying things out here. Okay, but then let's notice that we have 12 is equal to a squared plus b squared. But now if we uh, add a squared to both sides here, we'll see that we get two a squared minus 8a plus 16. And that's maybe the first important equation to have. We have 12 equals this 2a squared minus 8a plus 16. And you might want to immediately solve for a, but in fact, that won't be the right strategy. I mean, that will be a strategy that works, but it's a bit more work than what we'd like to do. What we'd like to do instead is to solve for a squared. So let's do that. So I'll maybe write here that we'll just note we have the following value of a squared in terms of a. So we have a squared equals 4a minus 2. Okay, so let's put a nice box around that because that'll be useful as we move forward. And then I guess I should also say here that similarly, B satisfies the same equation. And that's really because A and B are playing symmetric roles here, although you could work out from scratch using similar steps here to, like I said, get to B squared equals 4B minus 2. Okay, so we've got these nice, really power-reducing formulas for A and B. So I think that's pretty useful. And now what we'll do is calculate A to the fifth and B to the fifth in terms of lower powers of A and B, and then we'll be on our way. Okay, so let's first note that A to the fourth is equal to A squared squared, so that's 4A minus 2 squared. So let's note that that is equal to 16a squared minus 16a plus, plus 4 by multiplying things out. But we can take this a squared and replace it with this 4a minus 2. And if we take that a squared and replace it with 4a minus 2, we get this nice expression for a to the fourth power in terms of just a to one power. And I'll collect everything here. So we have a to the fourth is in fact equal to 48a minus 2. 28. So like I said, I'll let you guys look through the details. It's really just like symbolic manipulation, but it's not too bad. Okay, so now what can we do from here? Remember, we want to get a to the fifth. So we'll get a to the fifth by multiplying both sides of this equation by a. So let's do that. So multiplying both sides of this equation by a will give us a to the fifth equals 48a squared minus 28a. 
but we've got the same kind of thing again. Notice we have this a squared here, which can be replaced with 4a minus 2. So that's going to give us 48 times 4a minus 2 minus 28a, where, like I said, we replaced this a squared with that appropriate value. So now putting things together here, we'll get a to the fifth equals 164a and then minus 96. So like I said, that's just from combining like terms. And then again, because a and b are playing symmetric roles, we could have done this whole calculation based off this equation with b, and we would have gotten b to the fifth equals 164 times b minus 96. Okay. But notice that we've got an a to the fifth plus a b to the fifth here. So it's in fact important to look the, at that expression. So let's do that. So we'll have a to the fifth plus b to the fifth is in fact equal to 164 times a plus b just by grouping. And then let's see, that'll be minus 192. Okay, so let's maybe bring that expression to the top and we'll finish this warm-up problem up. So on the last board, we determined that a to the fifth plus p to the fifth was 164 a plus b minus 192. Let's recall that a plus b was equal to 4, so we can get a nice numerical value for that. So this is equal to 164 times 4 minus 192. So that's just straightforward arithmetic, and that will give us the number 464. Okay, so just to reiterate, we have a to the fifth plus b to the fifth is equal to 464. The next thing that we need is 100ab. So let's see how we can get that. So let's notice that 100ab is the same thing as 50 times 2ab. So that's pretty clear because 50 times 2 is 100. But now 2ab can be expressed as follows. So we'll have a plus b quantity squared minus a squared plus b squared. We'll notice a plus b quantity squared is a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. So we're subtracting off the a squared plus b squared, leaving exactly what we want. But now we know values for each of these things. So this is going to be 50 times, well, a plus b squared is equal to 16 minus 12. So we get something like that. But 16 minus 12 is 4 times 50 is equal to 200. So let's look at that. We have 100 AB is equal to 200. But putting this all together, we see that a to the fifth plus b to the fifth minus 100 AB is in fact equal to 264. Great, so now that we've done this warm-up problem, let's maybe look at what's underlying this whole setup. Now we're gonna dive into what's really going on under the surface here. And we're gonna do this from a fairly basic level, although you can do this in more details if you'd like to. So let's say that a two-variable polynomial, p of x, y, we'll say x and y are the variables, We'll say that polynomial is symmetric if p of xy equals p of yx. So in other words, the polynomial stays the same if we swap the two variables. And then I'd like to point out that I've written some research papers related to this. Well, it's, they're not about polynomials, they're about things called vertex operator algebras. And if you'd like to check those out, here's maybe a way to do that. One of them is called permutation orbifolds of Vera Soro vertex algebras, and the other one permutation orbifolds of Heisenberg vertex algebras. One of them is in the Journal of Mathematical Physics, and the other one is in the Journal of Algebra. So it should be pretty easy to find those if you'd like to. And they're both on the archive if you want to look at them there.
Okay, so now what we'd like to do is maybe start with a couple of examples and non-examples of symmetric polynomials. So let's start with an example. So notice that x squared times y plus xy squared is most definitely symmetric. If we replace x with y, we get the same thing. That's because we have commutativity of multiplication and addition. Now, what about a non-example? Well, it's pretty easy to write one of those down as well. What if we take x cubed y squared plus xy to the fourth? That's most definitely not symmetric. So now that we have that, we're gonna build up to a fairly general result or a general result in this setup. But we're gonna start with a little bit of an example. Okay. And that example will be to notice that x cubed plus y cubed is most definitely symmetric, but it can in fact be written in terms of simpler objects. And in fact, here we can write this as one half times x plus y times the quantity three times x squared plus y squared minus x plus y all squared. So maybe we'd like to check this real quick and that shouldn't be too hard. So I'll maybe take the half out and note that this left, right hand side, I should say, well, without the half becomes three times x plus y times x squared plus y squared minus x plus y cubed. But let's see, if we multiply this out, we'll get three, and then this will multiply out to x cubed plus y cubed. So I think that's pretty clear. And then we'll have plus x y squared, and then plus x squared y from the cross terms there. But now this is a cubic binomial, so we can multiply that out as well. I won't go through all the details, but what we end up with is x cubed plus y cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared. But let's notice that some stuff cancels, and, it, and in fact, everything that we want to cancel cancels. This and this cancel, and then this term and this term cancel, keeping in mind that we've got this multiplier of 3 out front. And then we've got three x cubed plus y squared minus a single x cubed plus y cubed gives us two x cubed plus y cubed. But then when we reinsert the half, we're good to go there. So what we noticed is that this x cubed plus y cubed was able to be written as an algebraic combination of x plus y and x squared plus y squared. And it turns out that in this two variable case, we can write any symmetric polynomial as an algebraic combination of those two symmetric polynomials. These are called the power sum polynomials. And we'll finish this video by proving that. Okay, so to finish this video off, we're gonna prove the following theorem. This is a baby version of a fairly large theorem. Maybe we'll make a little mini series or a special video on the second channel about the large theorem. So every two variable symmetric polynomial is an algebraic combination of x plus y and x squared plus y squared. So these two power sum polynomials. And I won't write this down, but I'll just say it's enough to work with polynomials of homogeneous degree. So when I say homogeneous degree, I mean the degree in the x variable plus the degree in the y variable. And that's because you can take any polynomial and split it into pieces that are of homogeneous degree. Okay. So that being said, I think it's pretty clear that we could take a symmetric polynomial, which I'll call P of X, Y, and we'll say that it's of degree N and we can split it into pieces. And those pieces will be C zero X to the N plus Y to the N plus C one times X, Y times X to the N minus two plus Y to the N minus two plus ending at C N, which will be X to the N over two Y to the N over two. And I guess I should say that really what we have here is maybe the floor of n over two or something like that. 
So maybe we'd like to put that in there just to be super careful because in need not be even. Let's be really clear and see what goes in this next term just so that there's no doubts. So that would be C2 times XY quantity squared and then X to the N minus four plus Y to the N minus four. Okay, great. So now we're back to what we need to show. And that is XY is an algebraic combination of our two polynomials, which maybe I won't rewrite here. I'll just put these two boxes. So of those two power sum polynomials. And then the next thing that we need is that for all, maybe N, which are natural numbers, x to the n plus y to the n is also an algebraic combination of these. So it turns out proving that xy is an algebraic combination of those two is fairly straightforward. And then this other bit is actually not too bad as well with induction. Okay, so let's start with this xy. Okay, so we can just simply notice that xy is the same thing as one half times x plus y quantity squared minus x squared plus y squared. That's most definitely an algebraic combination of those two. So what that means is that we're good to go here. We have proven this, which means all we need to prove afterwards is this second statement. So let's maybe do that. So to finish this thing off, we need to show that for all natural numbers n, x to the n plus y to the n is in fact an algebraic combination of x plus y and x squared plus y squared. And we'll do this by induction. But let's notice our base case is done because our base case is really the x cubed plus y cubed case, which we checked on the previous uh, board during a little bit of exploration. Okay, so now let's make an induction hypothesis. So let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to three, so some k bigger than or equal to three, we have x to the k plus y to the k is an algebraic combination of those polynomials, but I'll just write it as an algebraic combination. Great, and next up we'll consider the following object. And that object will be x plus y times x to the k plus y to the k. So let's notice that this object is an algebraic combination of these two by our induction hypothesis. And now let's multiply this out and then by moving some things around, we'll see that this is in fact equal to x to the k plus one plus y to the k plus one plus xy times x to the k minus one plus y to the k minus one. So we can easily take this xy times this stuff and move it to the left-hand side of the equation, and we've expressed x to the k plus one plus y to the k plus one as an algebraic combination of these two power sum polynomials using our induction hypothesis. So that finishes this proof off. Now, earlier I mentioned I had written some papers related to this, and in fact, I made a YouTube video based off of the construction of the Heisenberg vertex algebra. So maybe you're interested in that, and it should be on the screen right now if you'd like to check it out. And that's a good place to stop.